in Nexus Gaming Series. What is up? We have another exciting match for you tonight. We have Logical Decision taking on Soak Every Lane. Mocus, I believe we cast Logical Decision the opening week. That is right, we did. We might see a zero tool ban or zero tool play. I think we're going to see a Samuro ban, definitely in this game. I think the Samuro ban's coming out. We've already seen the talks about it. I think we logical decision likes to ban their avatar. I don't know if Soak any lane, Soak every lane has any avatar players, but uh, maybe they'll flip the script this time and play an avatar themselves. Uh, both teams. As yeah, as an avatar player, I like this map as an avatar. You have a lot of really kooky mind setups that you can do. You can soak while your team is engaged in there and getting the XP lead here going into the first objective, getting seven while they're six is pretty important. Definitely. Now, something I know we should be on the lookout for is that that infamous Samuro player also plays the Lost Vikings. Yes. This is a great Lost Vikings map. To the detriment of my own team, they uh, they use Lost Vikings. Yep. So the teams are getting set up here. We've got a few people uh, AFK wrapping everything up, getting their prep work done. So let's go over the maps real quick while we wait. We have the bands tonight being... Battlefield of Eternity, as well as Cursed Hollow. Logical decision taking the ban on Cursed Hollow. Silk Every Lane taking the ban on Battlefield of Eternity, which makes complete sense with the type of heroes that they like to play. Right, Cursed Hollow is the biggest map, and Battlefield of Eternity is the the two lane map that is legal right now. So you know, banning Battlefield makes sense if you don't want to deal with that. It's a PVE race. Cursed Hollow is gigantic and requires a little bit different skills. Uh, you need a 1-3-1 one, one setup generally as opposed to a 1-4. Yeah, and so as we said, we've got Volskaya Foundry being picked by Silk Every Lane for the opening map. We're, we're expecting Samuro Bands. We're expecting possible Vikings. I expect if Logical Decision has done their homework, neither of those heroes may get through. Now, I don't know if Logical Vikings is... Or, Logical Vikings. If Lost <laughs> Lost Vikings is worth banning in the first round, there I think Kalefoss is way more important Definitely. to either get rid of, but but log, uh, logical decision has first pick, right? So they will have yes. the option to get Kalefoss. Yeah, I think I think the key here is locking down with Kalefoss. Definitely Kalefoss is a terror of this map, as are heroes such as Alex Straza. And... We have not seen Alex Straza in Division B. Really? Yeah, the, in, in the stats are three heroes we have not seen. Abathur, Alex Straza, and Ma uh, Malaganis. Interesting. Well, she, well, she slips through tonight. She does. This is one of her better maps. The point control with the dragon form does so much. Uh, we are waiting on one person on the side of Logical Decision. We're having a few, looks like, either AFK or connection issues to kick it off. I think one reason why I don't see as much Alex Straza is that she gets pretty hard countered by a really good Anna. Yeah. And Anna is, as far as healing output, the best you can get. Yeah, Anna right now is just incredibly strong and it's ridiculous. <laughs> Even without the broken talent, she's just dominating the healing stats right lately. Yeah, she can hit two people real easy. Uh, I played her in a brawl the other day, and I never stopped healing, and I never ran out of mana. Yeah, Anna looking so good right now. Uh, so anything else you're looking forward to seeing from these two teams going into this, Monkus? I, I really want to see Samurai. They're not going <laughs> to let Samurai through, but I, I really want to see Samurai. I want to see Samurai. I want to see Zeratul. Uh, I want to see uh, those meme heroes that just make you so annoyed that you're playing against them. Heck, I'd like to see an Abathur. We have not seen an Abathur in Division B. Uh, we have a team named after Abathur. Let's see Abathur. Yeah, I'd love to see some Abathur play. He's in a good spot right now as well after the recent reworks. Oh, definitely. He has an insane healing output. Mind build is, is strong as well. You have options at 7. You don't have to go Mule. You can go the extra shielding because it applies to heal to everybody. It's just... Yeah. Yeah, Mule doesn't get as much value, I feel, on this map, because that, that Protector's going to take that fort most of the time, especially after that first one. This is true, and especially here, uh, 
Abathur can push with the group shielding really hard. On the yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. If Abathur's on the team that's winning this map, the, the map is theirs to lose. Same thing with the Vikings, though. I mean, you have split, constant splits up going on. You have a Viking can jump in the mech and keep your whole team pretty much on the field of battle while the other two just sit down in the shadows and soak their lanes. Uh, Bribe is so powerful on this map with the turrets coming up quickly. And you the, have that top lane push that can, you can keep going nonstop. The one pro tip I will say if you're Viking and you're driving the, the protector is that if, you're, if, if it's the third protector and... You have a lane open to the core. Hit the core. <laughs> Don't try to kill people. Hit the core. Hit the core. Typically, I see the Vikings running the guns. I think that's probably just a little easier for them to keep track of everything that way. I've seen them run run the legs as well at times. Well, if you're running the guns too, hit the core. <laughs> Number one rule. What is it, Mookus? Hit the core. There we go. That's how you win the game. So, we're just waiting on one. We, the clock is ticking. But one interesting thing I think about this map, because of how strong that third Punisher is and how it can just end a game, you want heroes that come online before six. Definitely. This is definitely a more of an early game map these days with, after the Punisher buffs so long ago. Uh, that third Punisher almost always decides the game. It's it's definitely the most snowball-y map because first Punisher gets rid of the well to the next Punisher, gets rid of the well and the fort to the next Punisher, gets rid of everything. And you... Yeah, that if you if you get a good enough push down that top lane, you could have uh, catapults pushing top during that third objective and just really split their team and split the, the focus there towards the end of the game. Yes, and I think the most important thing on this map is item control. One thing that you can do if you draft the right heroes, like say a Malthail, you can steal the other team's turret camp right at the start. Because people usually sleep on that turret camp for about 30 or 40 seconds after it spawns. You need to be on top of that. Yeah, definitely. Turret camps come up in one minute, and if you take them immediately within the first few seconds of them coming up, they will be back online by the time the objective is up and going. In fact, we had that come up in a match earlier tonight for ourselves, and both teams have split off to take their take another turret to bring back to the fight during the objective. <laughs> yeah, the turret control is super important, as is getting that healing camp. Yeah, that healing camp makes such a difference. Just to put it in perspective, we had a full lockdown rain through every heroic and everything on top of Ambin with an anti-grenade plus that healing turret or healing objective they their health went nowhere it was ridiculous and i believe those things get buffs for being mercenaries i'm not sure the, the turrets get buffs i don't know about the healing camp but uh the turrets definitely get buffed and those turrets hit pretty hard when there's a viking standing next to them <laughs> yeah that's how the viking can really contribute just by standing next to the turret and letting them do all the work so it looks like our last player is finally logging in he had some technical kitty issues they said well hope the cat's okay hope, I hope so too my dog is currently napping and is annoyed that i'm even referring to So once again, while we're waiting now, here's a review of the maps. At Logical Decision, banning Cursed Hollow. Soak Every Land Lane, banning Battlefield of Eternity. And we have Volskaya Foundry for our first map, picked by Soak Every Lane. So Logical Decision will have the first pick. We should hopefully be starting out shortly. We're going to go AFK for a second while we wait on these guys to filter in here finally.
got our final player here. The teams are ready. And it looks like we're going to be kicking this off here pretty quickly now that everybody's together. Fans, put your blame on Zoltoid in the NPS chat. Here we go. Logical Decision is going to have the very first pick going into this. Snap in, Samurai. <laughs> you, you don't think they waited out? Give the give B-Med a little hope here. If you're going to ban the problem hero, you do it right away because the other team might ban a hero that you consider a problem. You don't be cute. You just do it. You just do it. There it is. Snap and Samurai. Screen is loud. I wow, wish. that was an immediate ban on a, that Anubarak. They do not want to deal with that cocoon nonsense. Not at all. Anubarak is one of those heroes who's kind of climbed up to the top since his recent buffs, competing with Diablo for top tank, I would say, at the moment. And there's an immediate Maev ban as well. And an immediate. The, both teams knowing exactly who they want to ban here. They've got the game plan and they're ready to roll. Logical decision. Lock in kill buffs. Just, just do it for me, please. <laughs> Just, it, 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 it's, it's the, there. oh god. Okay, I can see that. Diablo, Diablo, it's a, it's a good pick, but you, go. you see what happens? And Kael'thas Raynor are not going to give away any real early strats here on the side of Soak Every Lane. So Let's see here, what teams do Kael'thas and Raynor fit into? Hmm. Everyone. Yep. So here we go, let's see what comes up next. We got Diablo, I look, look, expect to see a Jaina, maybe a Taronda coming out here. You definitely want a mage, especially one with high weight of clear, so Jaina would be a, a good pick. Um, this is actually, a, I think, a harder map for Diablo to get I'm here to help. as much value because of the <laughs> of the lack of walls. Zero tool. There it is. I wanted to see it. We got it. I'm very happy. And of course, the Diablo Jaina Zero tool combo everybody knows and loves is now an option. I can't wait to see it in action. Uh, easy gonna go void prism and to great effect but i, I love going i might have been uh near it. it's so much damage uh who uh, i i think they you might ban vikings here nope banning it. they're not worried about the vikings well, you, you can adapt to them, and Zero Tool is Definitely. really good at dealing with, with Vikings. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised Zero Tool ma even made it through with Vikings being an option here for Soak Every Lane. We've seen them do it on this map before. Well, uh, they just decided that Anubarak Anna were the Let's harder say, things to deal with. I really like both of those picks. Johanna can walk up to Diablo, stoop off, has a great area denial. And that silence was always so powerful on that tiny little objective. So, what's going to be coming out from the side of Logical Decision, do you think? They've got their nice little combo set up. Who do you think they're going to run for healing? I'm thinking Taronda. I know Wono Pro likes his Malfurion yeah, as well. Taronda. I heed the voice of Illumina. There's a and Taronda. Then off lane. Oh, yeah. Imperius. Oh, Imperius is the best offlane right now. There's just not a competition. He also he he wins offlane with the giant killer. Yeah, we lost somebody. Rip. Well, it was the last pick, yeah. so if they just announce what they were going to pick, we can go straight into. Uh, <laughs> we don't have to redraft. I don't have control of that, unfortunately. Well, let's discuss the picks. Uh, I, I love Imperius. I love grabbing that. He does the most damage for a off lane to go into the five man for team fights. You can't Definitely. get better than that. No. He has great lockdown with his stun. It's just I might, amazing. I might have a little bias here from what we've been running, but Rexar is in a really good spot right now as well as an off laner. Rex, Rexar, with the recent buff, is, insane. is pretty crazy. We've been running them ourselves. I, I think the difference is that uh, Misha can get killed, and yeah, Rexar will just be there to come back, but Imperius just takes through everything, stuns so much easier, and does even more. 
Definitely, I can't argue with that. Imperius is definitely one of the strong, one of if not the strongest off laner going right now. So I think off lane is the what they have to settle on yeah. uh, for Soak every lane. The team, um, they're debating that now. They're discussing, and it looks like they're going to announce the fifth pick, as you said, and then just build, go into standard mode and pick their heroes. And we're okay. They're going Gazlo. Gazlo. No Vikings. Oh. I, I like that compared. Vikings will get absolutely destroyed by Zeratul all game. Uh, I, I, I love this. I love the grab a bomb. Just can. Uh, there's a big difference between grab a bomb at 10 and grab a bomb at 20. Yeah. So uh, ready up yourself, I, Locus. Here we go. So we're jumping right in. These are both. Wombo comps right here. You have Jaina Zeratul on one side, and probably either Lightning Breath, or it could be Lightning Breath or Apoc. Both work really well with uh, Void Prism. Yeah. And on the other side, you have Kael'thas, Gaslow, Stu. Now, something I recall, though, I'm curious to see what they do here. Something I recall last time we we uh, cast Logical Decision is Snowglare ran a Water Elemental both games. I mean, Watermental is strong once you get to 20, but with Void Prism, like, it's really easy to set up that that Ring of Frost, Definitely. and you get so much value from it. I think we'll be seeing it, too. They don't really have anything that Water Elemental has to, I guess, for lack of a better word, keep off of Jaina. She's got and a good front line and no, no real dive on her side, but here we go. On the side of... Boxer decision. We have Wono on the Tyrande, Ziltoy playing Zeratul, Ulysses on Imperius, E Day on Diablo, and Snowglare on the Jaina. And for Soak Every Lane, we have Philip K on Johanna, Demon 13 on Raynor, Strokes on Kalthos, Imeduo on Gaslo, and Key on. I hope Five, I said those names correctly. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. It's one of those times when you realize you've never actually read this name out loud before. It's like, early huh. talent, so we've got a Lose Chosen, Greater Cleave, Fingers of Frost, Burn the Impure, and Soul Shield. You got Ace in the Hole on Jimmy. I think that's the right pick here. With the Johanna can set that up pretty easy. Uh, Pop and Puster rules on Stukov. Going for that AoE trait value. We've got the standard mana addict going for globes, and uh, don't see that too often with Johannes. It's usually the healing uh, talent at level one. Definitely, and Soul Shield. You don't see that taken too often on Diablo. Oh, I never see. No, I never see that taken. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. They do have the Kalthos, so that may be why. But both of his other talents here are just so strong. Yes, they banned Samuro Grievance. Here we go, both teams kind of doing their thing. In the bottom lane, I'd say here at the start, Gazlo's going to have the advantage. He's got the better wave clear, but he definitely doesn't have the survivability that Imperius does. Well, I'll, Imperius just needs to get in on him a couple of times, and then uh, he can't do much. Yeah, one good spear to Gazlo's face, and that's the end of Gazlo, I'd say. But we'll yeah, see how it goes. If I was in Imperius, I would have frozen the lane way back after Gaslow cleared and make Gaslow come up to me. Definitely. As I said, B Med is known for his wacky heroes, Samuro, Gaslow being the ones that are known the most. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm sure he's got yes. a lot of practice against an Imperius. Yeah, they definitely play um, <laughs> some very unique heroes. Unique. I'll, I'll just. <laughs> I, I will say that. And Imperius is freezing the lane right back near his towers. Well that done. is exactly what he needs to be doing. b sneaking around the bottom here. Gonna try to now that laser can do a lot of damage. And both teams coming to fight over the support camp. An early clear oh. of the right bruiser camp, and Key finally gonna take it here. Wow, that is a great dive on that Kael'thas, but he gets away. This is a dead Zeratul. Zeratul goes down, Diablo's next, running right into the silence. He gets locked down by the grab, and down goes Diablo. So two early kills going to the side of Soak Every Lane. Very nicely done there, turning that that invasion around on the on Logical Decision. 
as a first try. Yeah, so. I, I, I don't like the play from Logical Decision to go for that while Diablo is at 27 souls. It's, it's a play you do when Diablo is fully... But he, he just got torn up uh, as a result because he had only a third of his... Yeah, we've got level 4 talents online. Looter Blaze from Toronto, Rinding Cleave. We've got Frost Shards, Battle Hunger, and Souls of the Flame. So kind of common builds on the side there. Minus that, that Soul Shield there. I'm, I'm, I'm just guessing he took it because of Kael'thas or Dazzler, but yeah. you, you get so much healing value from either the Slam Jam talent or the <laughs> Globe talent. Yeah, and Feast uh, Souls is pretty strong here because you're always fighting near a lane and you always should have somebody in that lane soaking so Diablo can just poke up a little bit, grab that Globe and stay in that fight for so long. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that they're just kind of letting this rock right now. Yeah, they're finally they taking their camp. That's a very late camp taken on the side of Logical Decision. Zertul was up top clearing that other lane. And 85% here and Logical Decision not invading at all. They may just be giving this first one up. That looks like what they're going to do. They, if they want to invade, yeah, they needed to hit 7 and then go in immediately. So b down here taking the turret camp again. Not going to be able to pick it up. Unless he's just going to drop the turret and keep going. We've done that before. <laughs> Blue team has taken control the XP of I, I think though. they just realized their mistake there. Yeah. Uh, you can't have Stukov pick it up either because he had Stukov has the healing. It, I think they have realized that they dropped the healing. They one. need a third B med going back to pick up uh, or defend nope. the healing thingy <laughs> until somebody. Not sure what the, what's going on down there. Uh, oh, like, well, I'm surprised Imperius, yeah, Imperius, go down there and grab that. That looks like what Yusuf is doing. He's got turrets all around it, though. So Look, inter go interesting go decision in, down get there. <laughs> Kael'thas finally rotating down to pick it up. Like, uh, even if you force them to drop a turret to def to pick that up and defend it, you still get rid of a knife. So the Protector not getting much done. Got the wall on mid. Both towers pretty much one hit away. And they got the wall on top and nothing of that well. So not a very used protector there. And I think that's because they were busy playing musical items down in the bottom lane. Yeah, you, you really want to get that well down on top with that first protector. More so than you want to press the item advantage. Of. Yeah, that said, uh, Soaker Every Lane does about have half a, about half a level on the XP lead at the moment. As Logical Decision takes their fortification fortification camp again. We've got turrets on pretty much everybody on this map at this point. That's that's right. Because Logical Decision didn't try to contest, they were able to get their turret camp again. So right now we have a Healy Doodle and two turrets on one side and two turrets on the other side. That we do. Right, hey, if you have a better name for the Healy thing, be my guess. Circle of Life. I'd like to see... It. That said, if Suck Every Lane can get a second one of those before this next objective, they're going to have a lot of control over that shrine. Two turrets on the other side or not. Hey, they just have to figure out who is the person going to pick it up, because <laughs> there seems to be a little confusion about that. I think if they get it, you stick it on Joe and let Joe just run it with herself. Now, I will say, because they have Stukov and Kael'thas, I think they have a little bit better point control. Yeah, I would agree. At least, well, Tins are online, so let's see what we're getting here. We've definitely got Starfall, we've got Void Prism, we've got the Water Elemental. Angelic Armaments and Apocalypse, so Snuggler is still favoring that Water Elemental. Yeah, uh, Hyroblast is kind of interesting because Jada can just cancel it and Imperius oh, has a big an Apoc to coming out. Gravel Bomb! Gravel Bomb pulls all of the blue team onto it, the kit goes to blue, but not able to be grabbed just yet. Zertul okay, goes down. Do. Johanna is still alive at this. Imperius goes down as well, and both teams it, fighting it hard. It was her yes. grabbing the Healy Doodle and dropping it that got her the Sager life. And Ide eating the Pyroblast there and walking out pretty much with some about 800 health left. But. Soak every lane wins that fight, but who ended up with that soaking thing there? The healing totem there. Well, uh, Phil K picked it up and then used it, uh, okay. and I think so did 
Yeah, so did Kael'thas. Yeah, I saw. It, it was necessary to keep Johan on. Yeah, I saw the first one go down. I did not. I lost the second one in the chaos of that fight there. That was pretty yeah. quick thinking on Joe though to grab it and just drop it immediately. At least deny it to the other team. Here we go. We've got the point under control of Soka Relay to start. Uh, big dive going in. My mouse is acting all kinds of crazy here. Here we go. We got control of our map again. Big. Big lockdown on the Imperial, so he's going to turn around and, and go after the bombs get spread, the turrets come out. And logical decision again, having to back up and hit that well, which they thankfully still have here. Yes, right now what they need to do is clear out these turrets. And there's a lot all, of turrets All the ults are, 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 are up except for water elemental on logical. Yeah, Starfall is up, shields are up, Apoc is up, Void Prism back up now. We've got Hyperion, Gravo, and Stukov arm up on the side of Soak Every Lane. Both teams just kind of dancing around it. There's a big VP on the back line. Here comes the APOC. Came out too early. They didn't cancel the Void Prism in time. Starfall goes down, though. Down goes Kael'thas. Hyperion doing some damage. E-Day is super low. Philip K is super low as well. Down goes Johanna. E-Day is going to squeak away. Oh, man. E-Day almost <laughs> kept walking into the Hyperion and made a big laser to the face. So good turnaround there on the side of logical decision, although the APOC timing was just a little off. Not yeah, the APOC, I, the dropping the void prism I'd say was a little off. Looks like Ziltor's well, gonna I, rotate down in a way. I think right now Soak Every Lane is really regretting leaving that turret or the the healing well up because that is what let logical decision come back. Definitely I agree wholeheartedly with that. They had enough time to rotate back, heal up, and let Tyrande top some people off and go back in. And Starfall hitting so many people, Tyrande had pretty much non-stop heals that entire fight. The cooldown reduction when that thing is hitting people is just insane. But on the flip side here, now Soak Every Lane has all of their old so and They've got turrets all game. They don't need to go take a camp. They've got Gazlo on their side. But here we go. Teams coming out on both teams as well. <laughs> 13s are up, Ziltoid is rotated back up, Soak Every Lane has control of the point yet again, Diablo trying to take out some of those turrets. Philip K just Diablo. kind of zoning the bottom as Beatman zones out the top. Diablo dives in hard, here comes the gravel bomb, here comes the push, here comes all the damage and Zeratul's gonna walk away, bombs are spreading everywhere, Ziltoid at 20 health getting out, but Jada goes down, Philip K at 150. Gonna stay alive, Wono in trouble here, he's gonna, nope, oh, Jimmy's waiting right there. So Wodo goes right. down as well, and what a turnaround on that fight. A great synergy between the Kael'thas and the Gaslow. You had bombs coming out, you got burned flesh, uh, being able to hit two people at once really easy. Just exactly how you want to draw it up. Definitely, definitely. And here comes the Protector going down that top lane. Got to take out that top four. It looks like they're going to go ahead and rotate bottom. I would assume bottom, where they should take the well this time. Definitely. Oh, they are pushing mid. Nope, no, they're not. Just they tricked us. <laughs> they wanted to throw a hand on Diablo there. It looks like. So top lane will have catapult pressure every three waves. Here comes the rest of Soak Every Lane now. As the protector dives on in, goes through the turret, going straight for that well, and that health is just dropping really quick. Doing a very yeah, good that, job here. Just that let, well is going down. Yeah, doing a good job just letting B-Man poke at it with the turret. And they continue their assault here on the bottom lane. Snow Glare is super low. Already super low on health. Gonna have to back away there. And here comes the rest of the Soak Every Lane pushing in on the fort. They should get this fort as well, which is gonna put a very strong win condition in their favor here. On both sides. But uh, Snow Glare now has access to Ice Block. They were able to get the damage done on the uh, on the Protector during that fight and finish off that quest. That's going to be pretty critical to survive in Kael'thas. Yes, indeed. We've got Icy Veins on the Jaina, Mending Strikes on Zeratul, Harsh Moonlight from Tyrande, Divine Rage, and Devastating Charge on Diablo. For their 13s and 16s are right around the corner for Soak Every Lane. I, th I think these up. are pretty standard picks uh, other than the Soul Shield. <laughs> at, at 7, Eternal Flames is nice. I like the talent on there that gives ability damage uh, whenever you use an ability. On, it make, makes Diablo do so much. Yes, uh, Diablo is definitely one of those tanks with some good build variety throughout all his tiers. 
You can play him oh, super aggressively, or you can play him kind of as a frontline wall and just let your team do their thing. And it kind of looks like to be what he's going with with this one, with the Zeratul, Jaina, Taranda. Just kind of working it's... their way in slowly. So every lane pretty much gets this game for free with the 16 advantage. This is kind of the issue with this map where it's a little snowbally, but getting that the objective from top lane has led to getting 16 first, has led to getting the item. Yeah, the snowball effect is, is a little bit weakened since the XP changes, but even that passive XP does does catch up pretty quick. But it used to be so bad that by that second that second protector, they'd have all the front walls down and like a three or four level lead almost every time guaranteed. Oh, definitely. Before the XP changes, it was madness. The first protector one in the game. I've now seen it to where being able to hang in here, that third protector decides the game no matter who wins it almost all the time. The third protector is definitely the most important, and having this open lane to that keep is gigantic. It pretty much means if logical decision does not get this third protector, that's Yeah, that's going to be game. Although they've done a good job clearing it out once it actually approaches, so we will see how this goes. Looks like they're kind of posturing in the top lane, right? Ah, uh, doing the top lane tango. Yeah, they go both teams rotating down now together. Ziltoy kind of keep it, doing a good job keeping I'm vision. You see the danger pings out there from the side of Soak every lane. And Ziltoy going to steal that globe and run away. <laughs> E-Day posturing up. Mid lane being cleared. Yeah, without camps, there's surely not much you can do. But now both lanes are pushed in pretty evenly. So Ziltoid posturing up, B-Man getting those turrets down early. See Ziltoid go ahead and starts that laser up to drive him away. Cancels it out. So let's see what happens here. This is by far the most chaotic of the three objectives here. With both of those conveyor belts on either side. Both of the treadmills are just... The VP worst. on the Kael'thas. Apoc coming out this time to... In. Unfortunately, Logical Decision is timing a little off on that combo today. Ziltoid's in trouble. Eday dives hard on the Raider. Jimmy's in trouble. Raider is He's dead. on the conveyor belt to death. <laughs> Philip K not giving up though. Diving hard still going oh, man. super low. The Ignites. The Ignites yeah. are just doing so much damage. Down goes Jada. Zeratul died up in the top as well. And what started out as an unfortunate fight, taking down the Jimmy just swung the other way as those Kelthos bombs went round and round that conveyor belt. Yeah, the uh, logical decision has a higher burden of execution executing their combo because they have to time the release of the Void Prison just right with the APOC, whereas Soak Every Lane, Gaslow throws out his bomb, and as long as Kael'thas can throw out a flame strike within the stun period, he's all set. Yep. Unfortunately, logical decision not quite executing that combo so far, but here we go. So can we like rotating back in. Launch decision's gotta make an attempt on this shrine. They can't give this one up. But it looks like that's gonna be what happens. And to be well, they, they couldn't go in four v four v five at that point. No, and their tool is up they, they have, top. They kind of have to take their chances at defending. They, I think they would just have been suicide to go in straight away. Definitely. So here we go. They're posturing up. So can we just gonna kind of. Poke it down, <laughs> poke down the walls here. They're, they're waiting for the up. minion wave. You can, you, yeah. you don't have to do that. You can go right up to that little turret. Uh, yeah, put the yeah. hand on it, and the other one can't hit you if you are at the right. Side. Looks like they actually were waiting on Jimmy because he does have Hyperion up, and there, there it goes. So now they have all the cover and damage in the world here as they push on in. Fort is already down. Snowglare in trouble. Gets rooted. Able to pop the ice block, but it may not be enough. And the protector is chasing down Snowglare. You don't. Don't chase the kills! Take out that keep. Ziltoid low as well, and then Protector gets pretty much wasted there. Very nice job yeah. by Logical Decision burning it down quickly as it decided to go... As Soka Relay decided to go after the heroes instead of the keep, and this is going to help Logical Decision out, because 20 is on side for Soka Relay. If oh, you hate, you hate to see that happen. If Ulysses is getting healed quickly by Wono there. They are still going to get this keep. But I don't think they can end here, even with the 20s. This is a tough push in. Unless they get as long as Logical Decision plays safe here, they are 
going to come back, and we're going to see a fourth. For we have, looks like we will, and once 20 hits, Jaina's going to have Winter Mute on that Water Elemental. That comboed with his Void Prism could spell some serious trouble for Soak Every Lane. You have that, you have the level 20 version of Angelic Armaments, which means your entire team get, get, is kept up. You have Zeratul, who gets his mending from his ability damage, so he's not going to die soon. It's gigantic. So, speaking of level 20s, on the side of Soak Every Lane, we've got Blinded by the Light on Johanna. Taking her version of Storm Shield and blinding people will reduce that cooldown, which is going to be a great counter to that Void Prism burst. Then execute. We got presence of mind for the pyroblast, miniature black hole, and top off. I expected three of these picks. I, I did not expect it blinded by the light. I usually think to see indestructible and, uh, and the increased uh, Q range for Kalefus. I was not expecting the improved. Now that said, that Kalefus is getting plenty of uh, plenty of chances to throw his. Q's out safely onto teams as they get pulled in by the grab. So maybe that's the th they're thinking there. Throw an early pyroblast on somebody, chunk some health, grab the do the gravo into the flame strike, get a re pretty quick reset, and throw another one out. Yeah, he's probably doing that for the explosion radius more than anything else. But you have two oh, yeah. people on on logical decision who you don't want a pyroblast, and really a third with Diablo and the spell shield. Yeah. As long as Diablo saves that spell shield for Pyroblast, then like y you can't really do it on Imperius because he'll just use armaments. You can't do it on Jaina because she'll uh, ice block, and you can't do it on Diablo because he has spell shield. Yeah, so still definitely a very interesting pickup as far as old school for game one. We'll take note of that and see if we end up, whoever, if we end up talking to Soak Every Lane after this. Uh, we'll definitely have to ask about that option there. Well, we got level 20s picked up for all the decision. We have Winter Mute, Shadow Mending, Shooting Star, Heavenly Host, and Hellgate. All, ex all expected there. And here we go. We have our fourth control point coming up. It's been a while since I've seen four control points on well, Sky Apoc. Big VP into the APOC. Storm Shield popped by Johanna. Pretty much negating all of that combo there. And down goes. No, Zeratul's cleave is healing him up, and, but Imperius goes down. Down goes Zeratul, finally. Down goes Diablo. And once again, that grab combo is just doing work. And Tarada is going to get blasted by a Pyroblast as she goes flying halfway across the map. And that's just, that's, game. that's just spell game right there. Diablo is back up, but he's not going to have the health to, to really do anything here. Yeah, you can't do much 2v5 with a Gaslo. On the core. So technical, uh, as far as technical aspects go, Silk Every Lane definitely on top of their combos this game. Whereas, unfortunately, logical decision was not. It just a couple seconds off, couple half seconds off, using the A clock with the Void Prism appropriate. But I'm glad that I got to see their Zeratul. I really wanted to see that come. Definitely. So game one goes over two. Soak every lane. GG's to both teams there as we go into the post game here. Take a look at the stats. What do we got here? 14 to 3 in favor of kills. Definitely showed in that match the combo with the grab bomb and the flame strike just doing some work. And of course, Rainer there to just pick everybody off as they run off. Now, interesting little stat line here. You have a lot of. A lot of clumping. You have Jano 27,000. Taronda actually doing the most damage for logical decision with 30,000. Whereas for Soak Every Lane, Rainer with 51,000. Kalefoss and Gaslow with 43 and 44,000 uh, respectively. Johanna actually did more damage than logical decision's team. Yeah, that, That's impressive. That is very impressive. Now, Joe was in the thick of things the entire time, and Logical Decision was being driven out of those fights pretty quick. Uh, this is one of those instances where I think the ring would have helped secure those combos that they were trying, because you would have had yeah, an I, East Ring or APOC. One of those would have landed each time. I I, I, de I, I definitely... You, you, want, you wanted the ring to set up the APOC or vice versa. It, it, it's, But they were having some issues timing releasing the Void Prism at the right time. So I, I don't know if you want to add more burden of execution to that. 
I, I definitely think a, a big issue was letting Kael'thas go through. Definitely. Kael'thas definitely ran rampant on that, but even though he didn't have the top pick, we have the numbers in here. We're going to take a short break as we get set up for game number two. We will be back shortly. Back, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start game number two here. It's going to be on Tomb of the Spider Queen. This one was picked by Logical Decision, opting to go with the map pick after having first pick last game and not getting anywhere with it. Must be something they're planning, they have planned for their their matchup here against Silk Every Lane. Lucas, what are your thoughts as we get ready to jump into this one? Well, this is the Zero Tool map. This is the map you want, the Zero Tool. It's got really tight lanes that you can jump in between really quick. Uh, it's a one where the rotation is king more than the off lane. It's very much a team fight map. One of this map and Dragonshire are like the two biggest team fight maps. Definitely. And here we go, jumping into the draft. One nothing in favor of Silk Every Lane after a very strong showing in game number one. They were just on point with their ult combos. Let's see if Logical Decision can pull it back and kind of get their get their timing in order here. I expect to see. A Shamro man again from the popular decision. <laughs> this is gonna happen. Yep. And I mean, honestly, ban Kalthos. Don't deal with that nonsense. Yeah. Uh, here we got the Anubrak here. This is also a map that favors good wave clear. So we'll see if Asmadan or Zul or somebody like that pops out of this one here. Something a little different. Maybe try to mix this up on on the other team here. And a ban coming out from the side of logical decision. I'm oh, sorry, soak every lane. <laughs> Just, Same two bands as last time. Yeah, they just have two heroes they don't know what to deal with. Both teams so quick here on their, their pick and bands. And Diablo getting banned out this time, and they're alongside the Samuro, so here we go. First I think pick. they're putting too much value on that Diablo. They, they did they did that with the first pick where they snapped in Diablo. I think Kael'thas is a much higher priority. Definitely. We got Ziltoid on the Zeratul. And Johanna being played by, so far, Ide. 
So here we go, coming back to the side of Soak Every Lane. How do they counter this setup here? I'm curious. Well, right now they don't need to worry so much about countering it. They can just keep going with what they had last time, get Stukov. Uh, Johanna isn't available, but there are plenty of options. Imperius and Stukov, I like both of those picks here. Imperius gives you that solo lane control. So I wonder what that's going to do for... Are they going to run solo take Imperius, or is b going to play something a little different here? Oh, yeah, that's right. No, b not on Imperius. They, I have no idea. Uh, you, you can do Imperius in the four band. It's just not done all the time. No, he's not. We got Jimmy banned on the side of Logical Decision. Uh, uh, that's perfectly fine, getting rid of that. He Jaya. did so much damage. He was really high value for Soak Every Lane last game. Just a solid. Definitely. So Snowglare's Jaina getting banned out. I'm curious what Snowglare's going to go with here. There's Orphea available. We've got Goldan, who's really strong on this map because he's got great wave clear that can keep up with Kael'thas. Yeah, I, I I would guess Goldan. I would as well. Wodo's Malfurion is still available as well. There it is. Oh, now, Fury and Goldan, good call by both of us there. Yeah. You know, well, you, there are only so many mages in the game you can pick, and you need one for this map. Yeah, there's a few. <laughs> but for this map, definitely, there's not as many available to you as there might be well, on some of the other maps. Well, like, you can't really go Mephisto on this map because you need the wave clear. Yeah. So. No, definitely. There's not as many options on this one. Leo and Maev. I have Good seen Lord some serious. I have seen some serious Leo Maev combos. In fact, I suffered it earlier tonight. Uh, uh, Leo Maev combos are real. Uh, this is something I said the other night when I was uh, scrimming with my team. Uh, the other team picked Maev, and I said. You know what? We're going to have to snap in Kael'thas because you don't want to deal with Kael'thas. Dahaka from Ulysses. There you have it. What do you think of these drafts here? I've got to kind of lead you over towards the side of Soak Every Lane. Yeah. This, okay. As a Maya player, uh, there are two heroes you don't want to face on the side of, with Maya. You don't want Stukov and you don't want... Yeah. They have both... <laughs> And on top of that, they have a nice little tomb waiting as soon as that, to either secure the arena or keep them there after that arena falls. So we well, the tomb could goes. just be used to just lock them down and you get knife resets. This is yeah. a brutal team. And Maya also has amazing wave play. That she does. So here we go, pop it into this one here. Both teams ready to roll. But Imperius and Leo, that's a... They don't have a, a true main tank on the side of Soak Every Lane. They just really want that off lane power. <laughs> uh, I mean, I Imperius can main Imperius tank. Like, can, his strength yeah. is, is, is the off lane, but he has a stun. It is really strong. He, he is, has high sustain. So here we go. On the side of Logical Decision, we have Wono on the Malfurion, Ulysses on the Dahaka, Ide on the side of Johanna, Snowglare playing the Goldan, and Ziltoid on the Zeratul. And on Soak Every Lane, we have Philip K on Imperius, B Med on the Orc, Key on Stukov, St Strogues on Maev, and DMN13 on. Up, so I'm going to redo that there. Ah, uh, Bonds of Justice. I have opinions about the physical build versus the pole build for Maya, and yet I, I much prefer Bonds of Justice. Here we go, right off the bat, a nice brawl in the middle. Strokes is grabbed quickly. He's going to be able to walk away and leap on out to safety. Got one stack on her quest. That's really all you really want from that early in the game. Here we go, we've got... Imperius Echo. went Impaling Light. Uh, He's going to be the main tank. Yeah, he I, he wants extra con, uh, control. I just really love the Giant Killer one. It's just so much... I I don't play offlane that much, but when I do play Imperius, I actually like Impaling Light. 
But of course, I'm running that in QM, so take it. We'll take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> well, uh, his his giant killer does like 2.5 percent total health damage yeah. per stat. So and so with two front line, that's you know, and with the cleaves, you could be doing like 10 percent of their health every couple seconds. Yeah, I think the thinking may be if we can keep, get those cooldown reductions on that talent, just keep them locked down and let Maev pull them away and do your thing. We'll see how they execute it, though. They executed it pretty well, or executed their stuff really well in game one, so I'm curious to see if that carries over here. Or if right. Logical Decision can kind of get their things in order. Yeah, re really want to see him get the at least one of the quests completed for his, for his Q, because you don't really care much about the damage. You want that cooldown yeah. Well, it reduces an extra two seconds with each, or it increases two seconds with each one there, so we'll see. The two, getting the two person to fail is not that hard, it's the three person one that can be, can be quite the chore. But you've got Definitely. a Leo, maybe you just wait till 10, trap three people, and then spear them and all and finish it off. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, with either the Leo ult or the bio. He should be snagging that at some point. Level 4 is online for both teams here. We've got Sins exposed from Johanna. Kind of some standard builds going all around. Cleave build coming out oh. for Zeratul again. And I disagree about Blade Dance, but everything else I like. If if uh, Strokes can you use Blade Dance appropriately, it is definitely higher damage than Pin. But the problem is staying in melee range. There is yeah. a a circle around the Maya that pops out every time she does her Q uh, and she has Blade Dance, and that will be the physical damage. And it can also be blinded by John. Yeah, definitely. Both talents have their niche. Uh, I think not wanting to focus on that quest may be the main reason for that, but we'll see. Because Maya may be planning just to be in the middle of everything and spam Q for the during her ult. We'll see how this goes. It, it just depends on where Maev is going to be positioned, because yeah. if Maev is running away and throwing out cues, she often is safer and dealing a lot of damage, but with this quest, or with this talent, she wants to be right next to you throwing out cues. Definitely. Both teams have enough... Uh, well, there's 50 on the side of logical decision. I'm not going to bother trying to do math right now, but it looks like both teams have enough gems at this they point. They don't. You, you, you can, the gem will light up if they have enough. Oh, I actually never do that. Yeah, see how it's lighted up for blue but not red? Yeah, I've always just tried to do the math. Learn something new every day. Yep, see, and now it's lit up. That's why I'm in Div C. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't know that yet either until someone pointed it out to me. I, I did not do that one out on my own. Uh, you're making me feel better there. But here we go, both teams just kind of go back and forth on the poke on these points here, while Dahaka and Leo just kind of trade off in the bottom. I've actually not seen B-Med play Leo myself, so this is interesting to watch. Yeah, let's look down bottom real quick. Alright, that's good looking down bottom, let's go back up top. Oh, my camera's acting up one second, there we go, bouncing around for a second. Zooming in and the, the, out. The bottom lane right now is the standard Leo versus Dahaka, where they don't really get anything done versus each other, they and yeah. lanes pretty much say this. Oh, but big that is a though. deadly orc. Just barely gonna walk out. Not gonna be enough. Ziltoid gets that final blink in for the kill. b goes down. Very nice rotation or gank call on the side of logical decision there. But, yeah, but Maya comes down, gets the soap, picks up Leoric's gems, and Leoric getting the trait value at least. Yep, there he is, right back up. So here we go, both teams just trying to get their turn-ins here. And neither really giving any any leeway to the other team. Blinks, Maya blinks it. Does not get in. Got our level 7s on. Maya well. is pretty weak against blinds, and so yeah. against the Johanna, she has to wait till that E comes out before she can really... Got some dew from Joe at level seven. We've got wormhole, bird flesh, kind of the similar builds that we've seen before. DM mid is in low, but that Stukov silence is gonna save him as Zoltoid has to leave because he can't really do anything. His health was dropping so quickly there. Standing. I'm looking at the damage done. Gul'dan at twelve thousand damage, and whereas the damage for Shogun Relay right now is probably Yorick at six. 
the tanks are doing all the work right now. Yeah. That's a good chunk of damage from Golden Hand early on as well. As we check his quest stacks, it's at 25 already. The Hawk is sitting at 6, Maya at 2, and Mana Addict is one globe away for... There it is, right there, for Kael'thas. And yeah, still... Maya wants to be at about 5 stacks by level 10 on her cleave quest. Definitely. We have first Web Weavers going over to Logical Decision. So starting out strong on this map here. Now, the key thing about when you have the first spiders you want to you want to make get 10 from this you want to get down the top we go, we've usually, got usually the spiders are not strong enough that they can actually do much damage and you at best will get the wall we've got horrify isolation blessed shield void prism and malfurion is holding my to guess is gonna be twilight dream it's gotta be twilight dream you need something like that to counter that combo potential coming out of the other side. You can throw up Void Prism, then you can have Malfurion hit R and walk into the Void Prism, and then the second it comes down, the silence comes up. Yeah. Oh, good burrow from the Haka there. What did the flame strike, but it, they're surrounding Ulysses here. Uh, Ulysses is dead. Yep. <coughs> there it is. He, oh, he pops the there. Does he, is he going to have burrow up in time to survive? Oh, Able oh to walk I stopped away. you soon. I, I said he was dead. I was wrong. You jinxed it. Very I, nicely I done by so. Ulysses there. We have ults on the other side. We've got Angelic Armaments into Massive Show, Warden's Cage, and Phoenix this time from the Kael'thas. I mean, Phoenix plus Cage is pretty devastating. Now, Definitely. this is when Maya activates is at with ult. So you're going to see the, the Wombo combo from Phoenix Flame Strike in the Kael'thas. That's a big horrifying. Unless the horrifying. Root Philip K getting rooted as well. Ziltoy being pushed away by Key, having that, to keep. That Zilt was a fight without Maya. She was turning in in the in the top lane. So good pick there from the side of Logic Decision and Ziltoy actually was doing some work on the back line and Key pretty much had to force him away with the ult. That was, it was a picture perfect shot. Yes, it was. And so here we go. Silk every lane. Of course, both teams doing what they need to do, pushing in that top lane so they can have boss opportunities there. But Dahaka down to the bottom already has this this spider down to almost half health. Yeah, the two most important lanes here are top and bottom, respectively, because those giants can end the game. Yeah, those giants kind of go unnoticed mostly until they're at your core. <laughs> now, it is it is sometimes a strategy for the pro players to hold for the second spider because. The, the later spiders get so much more yeah and so every lane got the top top wall and towers down and there's they got a little more about the same value as the first ones for the side of logical decision although they're missing bottom f towers on their side as well big vp here comes the ults because every single ult in the match has just been thrown out all on cooldown and it's gonna be zeratul that drops first Followed by Maya, v -Med is super low as well, draining hope, hoping for the best. Gonna be ghost walking away. Ulysses is chasing Kael'thas down in the bottom there. Gonna I think <laughs> Kael'thas can get away, he, he can get away. That grab is gonna He's save his life. Let's see, Ulysses does have Feeding Frenzy. That grab is pretty much what secured Kael'thas walking away. Very nicely done by DMN on that one. Yeah, the, that was an amazing fight. The, the Wono Silence pretty much carried his team to success. Yeah. It was the perfect counter to the Wombo that soak every lane. And I, I'm pretty sure every single ult went down at almost the exact same time there. We saw in two Mayev's tombs. We saw Silence. We saw Blessed Shield. We saw VP. All that pretty much go out all at once. Everything went out, but... Because of that silence, Soak Every Lane wasn't able to, to follow get it up. Bound. Yeah, no, it was very well timed on the silence there from Wono, and there's a reason I've seen we were seeing teams ban his Malfurion last time we cast Logical Decision. And you, you can definitely see why a, a good Malfurion is scary, and Wono has a good Malfurion. And that top spider gets absolutely demolished. <laughs> yeah, no, no push in that top. I'll be better trouble in the bottom lane again. And Ziltoy is going to get this kill here. Down goes Viva. That's a ton of gems lost on the side of yeah. Soak Every Lane. Over 20. They just... Yeah, you can't go that far out. Uh, 
without any backup. Here we go. All, both teams rotating down to the bottom lane with this final spider here with Giants right behind it. This is a pretty big push, but Leo is going to be right back up. Philip K takes advantage of Demon in, taking a little bit of damage. There goes the Phoenix, going to help kind of burn the last of this down. And logical decisions, only a few gems away from another turn in. Yeah, they're a little short. Oh man, Ulysses. <laughs> what are you doing? Can they finish it off? There's a double hit with that stun. Ulysses is going to pop his straight. E Day is in trouble now. There's a big fear. Oh, that's fear. a great fear. Fear, silence, that's a oh dead end. Oh, VP following up as well. Here we go. Ziltoid is ready for it. Route comes the VP, down goes the cage. So now the ult's coming out from the other side. Down goes Stukov, but down goes Johanna as well, and Zeratul. So wow. <laughs> the counterplay. And they're going for more. It's 2-2 two to two here. Strokes is still going. He's got the chase potential on that Maiev. The root is going to slow him down just enough, and I think that buys enough time for Roger's decision to walk away from this one. I, okay. That was a great play by Sylvain coming back in there. I will point out, though, Maya's positioning there, she was out of range to get the hits from her blade dance yes. when she was throwing out those cues. So you get more value from pin down if you are playing it with that strategy. You, but she has a lot more wave clear with pin down if she runs up to the middle. She's a little bit too far away right there. Be... Sorry, a little, little info depth focus on Maya because I play so much of her. Oh, you're perfectly fine. I enjoyed the insight. We did, we did see uh, one stack of impaling light get completed throughout the last few minutes here. I actually missed one. It, it was off. during that team fight. Was it? I, okay. I, 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 I shouted out that he got the double hit. Okay, there was so much. There's so much going on with these two teams clash. They are dumping ults right and left. Both yeah, it, it's. They're going to have ults for the next clash. The only thing we're waiting on is really Warden's Cage, and that's up in 10 seconds. And it makes for a very hectic and very entertaining fight, and both teams are staying very focused in their fights as well. Yeah, okay. Logical Decision hits 16 first. That is a major talent here for them because of Void Slash. Cleave now will have a massively reduced cooldown when it hits two or more targets. Definitely. This is when their team super activates, is with this level 16. Yeah, they didn't quite get that in the last match. They have it here, and we're going to see them try to utilize it. We've got... Now, in a logical Alice. decision, they want this fight. They should be pressing for this fight. They're, they're taking this opportunity to get the Giants in the bottom lane. I would have pressed for beating up Sokeri Lane at some point here. Looks like they might be engaging in middle lane. Be so can relate themselves about half a level to go. They're actually pretty much a full level behind at this point. Zoltoy gonna drop off these last few gems. Oh no, he needs a few more. I am good at math, ladies and gentlemen. E Day's gonna be the one turning in the last few gems here. Got another set of spiders coming on the side of logical decision. But sixteen's come out and if Kalpas, please go at night. Please go at night. We will see as they Soka really does get their bruiser camp here now uh, just in he time. Does figure the sun well. Okay, he has burned flesh and those do go well with each other, but I think with the three melee on uh logical decision that ignite gets a little bit more Definitely. I don't play much Kelpas, he's not my favorite mage, but when they make me play him I do prefer Ignite myself. The one difference is that uh, the double Q has better wave, and that yes. might be what they're thinking there. I can definitely see that. So here we go, top lane. Spider going down super quick. And There's middle lane two. got cleared by the mercenary. Oh, the bottom lane is oh, the big ult. silence. Oh, big Armin silence. Armin's come out just in time. Super low. Leo that's gets feared. probably a dead Leo. No, the no. Aka down, Zeratul down. Whoa! Kael'thas just unloading the flames. That happened so quick. <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's the value of, of Burned Flesh and Fury of the Sunwell. Just that extra 8% health every time he hits two or one. Definitely, they're going to save this bottom keep after winning that team fight. That middle lane push from that from the uh, bruisers there, pretty much denying that entire middle lane spider there. As you pointed out a few minutes ago, so boss is still up. 
Boss has not been thought of by either team here, and they haven't really had a chance on either side, but here comes Soak every lane, coming to drop all their gems off pretty much immediately. I would have liked to see one of them run up and tag the boss before this, because uh, it happened to us earlier, and about a few, maybe one level before, the Fuzzy team got boss plus turned right around this 15-16 minute mark. Well, they just more so than the lane. boss, more so than the boss, I would have liked to see them clear the top lane, because see, the spider just stopped their butt right and parked it right at the yeah, end of the Yeah, that too. That is another valid point there. But these late game spiders with the boss pushing with them as well were just so devastating. And it, it turned an entire match around on our on against us here earlier tonight. And I've seen it happen several times throughout both NGS and just in Team League and everywhere else. If the lanes were pushed so far back, it's hard to see getting a ton of value from these spiders. Yeah. Middle that, ones are already down. Top one's at about a quarter of health, bottom one's at about a quarter of health. And if I'm not sure decision, I'll let the Haka clean up bottom and just go clear that top one. And, and if you're so every lane, I think you focus on this top lane. I think you forsake the bottom lane and just try to push in top as far. He goes Maev diving deep, not getting my big fear. fear. Dropping the cage on the Johanna. They're going to try to burn Johanna. Here comes the Phoenix. The stoppable is going to be popped, and Joe's just going to walk can't, away. You can't cage Johanna. No, that's... She'll just hit that trade and walk away. That's a two ults, wait, two ults used to the side, on the side of one unlogical decision. And kind of wasted ults on the side of Silk every lane there. And now they're super well, low on health as Ziltoid's bouncing in and out of the back line. But logical, uh, logical decision also used their fear pretty early, so they don't have that disengaged... No, they they, they kind of used it on the Maya for a disengage, and that kind of set up the rest of it. As Joe just kind of ate two ults there, and uh, eventually Blessed Shield looks like it did go down, get thrown out in that last sea fight as well. Both teams the, rotating towards the bottom. The one thing I will say, Phoenix is such a low cooldown pull. Just throw it out there, whatever you need. Yeah. Because look, it's it's all it came out after the horrify did, and it's already back up before. Yeah, and we saw that go out right there with the cage. Unfortunately, unfortunately Johanna at this point in the game is nigh unkillable, especially once 20 hits. Especially if she takes the indestructible town. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom lane has been picked up with the Giants for the side of Soak Every Lane as they're taking their Bruiser camp as well. Got Bruisers pushing down the middle on the side of Logical Decision, and Dahaga playing some cleanup in the top. I just noticed Johanna went uh, hold your ground again this game. I, I've, I've seen this a lot. I usually see the... Uh, the heal talent. So just surprised by the uh, the yeah, logic, choice to value hold your logical decision has started the boss and Soka Relate is completely unaware here. They're turning in. They, they know I think they know that they're there. I don't know what they can do. Uh, nineteen into twenty isn't as rough a fight as it may seem with the right ult, with the way their ults have been going, but that is definitely not a favorable fight. They give up the boss. There's going to be a turn in here on the side of Lunch of Susan. They might have enough. They do have enough. They have enough. And here comes Boss alongside this. Lane is pushed in just right behind the boss. And yeah, Soaker Relay is going to have to burn this quick. This could be a massive This could push. be game yes. if they don't respond immediately and hit 20 immediately. Those bottom, those both those camps going bottom and mid are going to get countered by the spiders. Their boss is already below half health though, and the keep is not even really anywhere. Yes, but the spider hasn't arrived yet. That is true. Here it comes. And that's imperious. Can they get away? There's oh, a tomb. the big in tomb with the, the silence, silence on water. Fear goes up. But here comes the Maya There's the cage. cage. Phoenix has not been thrown. Phoenix is already used. Leo goes down first. Philip K is next. And he gets isolated. That AOE the group isolation. Isolate the group. Oh. And we got two down on the side of Soak Every Lane. Lunch Decision pushing in. They've got a pretty much half health spider here. And they've got enough people here to just whittle this away. Zeratul can cause all kind of chaos and just stall this out. 80%. Here goes the core health. Down, down, down. Gold Dan goes down, though. Ziltoid. Yeah, it, it's not over if they can get rid of if they can get rid of one or two more. Twenty percent, twenty. Here goes the Phoenix. Down goes Zeratul. Wono is low now. Well. It's eight seven. This is going to be it though. Three two one. The Hawk has just got to stay there. Oh. W. And GG. His logical wow. decision takes game number two. We're going to have a game number three. Logical decision. You have shown us up.
We did not believe in you at the start, but you proved your might. Wow, well 50,000 damage from that Gul'dan. Tons of damage. Kael'thas sitting right there with him. And the Soak. We have... Both teams were just dead even stats-wise. Look at this, 155 to 128 on top soak, 50 to 53,000 on the damage, 16 to 72 on the healing. And look at the tanking here, 65 and 54, 69 and 59. Yeah, this was a very close game stat-wise. It just, like, you could pretty much match up person to person. 53 with 50, 34 with 37. Uh, well, I think one difference here is the the 24, 28, 26 versus the 17, 18. Yeah. That extra bit of damage. Really, I think, though, the reason why they, their team didn't put out as much damage is because they were silenced. They were <laughs> controlled so much. with Between Isolation and uh, Twilight Dream, every engage that they had that was favorable, it was flipped on them. They had that one really great counter-engage with... With Maya and Kael'thas it on the on the Bruiser camp, but logical decision pretty much controlled every engage with their silence and CCs. Definitely, we are going to take a quick break here as the teams are setting up game number three. It looks like we already have information, so we're just waiting on the invites. So we will be back here very shortly. Don't go away. We've got an exciting game number three coming up very quick. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are setting up game number three. It is going to be on Infernal Shrines. Let's take a quick look at the maps again. Game number one was on Volskaya Foundry, picked and won by Soak Every Lane. Logical Decision picked game number two on Tomb of the Spider Queen. They took that one themselves. The bands were Cursed Hollow for Logical Decision and Battlefield of Eternity on the side of Soak Every Lane. Soak Every Lane taking the map pick for game number three. They've picked Infernal Shrines. Are we going to see the pattern continue, or is Logical Decision going to steal away game number three? What do you think, well, Monkus? I think it's interesting that each team has chosen map pick over first pick because of how strong first pick is. But it's worked out so far. Yeah. Definitely has. As we, as we, these teams are f finishing up here. I'm going to go ahead and let them know we are ready whenever they are. Uh, this is game three. This is for all the marbles. This is for all the toys in the toy chest, all the cookies in the cookie jar. This one is for real. Everything is on the line here. The teams look like they are just pretty much ready. They are starting it up here. Some quick notes to point out. I did notice chat pointed this out, and we caught it afterwards. That Johanna did finish punishing game number one. Or right, game number two, sorry. But we jump into the draft here. Infernal Shrines. I'm going to guess Samuro Band number one for the side of... Yeah, Logical decision. Samurai <laughs> ban number one. And, for the love of God, ban or take Kael'thas. Yes, Kael'thas has been running amok for Soak Every Lane this game. 
Now, Infernal Shrines fills in some interesting options for uh, Soak Every Lane again. Well, okay, the thing is, Infernal Shrines is Kael'thas' best map. Definitely. There is no better map for Kael'thas, and letting the other team have Kael'thas is just asking to get ruffled. Definitely, definitely. I'm curious where things go with that. That Imperious Lyric not quite working out for Slug Every Lane in game number one. Does he have a new Brack band on their side? I'm curious, I'd like to see them go ahead and pick up that strong front line again. My Eva's band, though, they did lost your decision decided they didn't want to do it with that again. <laughs> uh, I mean, can't blame them. My Eva is very hard to deal with, no matter what. She creates positioning things that you have to deal with. She makes it so that your team has to be super careful. At... Not surprised that they played one game against against Maya and just said, you know what, nope, nope, nope. And Jada getting banned again on the side of Soak Every Lane, that respect ban for Snow Glare there. Now, I'm guessing the logical decision is trying to decide Diablo or... Yeah. And it's Diablo, so here go. I'm, I'm going to see, I bet it's Kael'thas Johanna right off the bat on the side of Soak Every Lane. I say, I say Kael'thas Stukov. I can see Stukov as well. Yeah, they don't, there's not a rush to get Johanna at this point, I would suppose, with Diallo already being picked. I mean, she might get... All right. <laughs> okay. I'm going to you buy win a this round, ticket. Mystic. I'm going to go buy a lottery ticket. I've, picked, like, I've been on fire tonight. Yeah, you got the... You got the Wono getting on the Malfurion. You got the Johanna pick. I bet we see Malfurion and Zeratul here, because if I'm soak every lane and that Malfurion walks away... Doesn't get picked here. I'm banning him next round. Although Alex is a strong pick on this map. We got Jimmy and Dahaka. I lost that one. You should have taken your shot. Oh, I, I would have not picked either one of those. So uh, Jim James. I mean, he fits with every team. Uh, Dahaka, not his best map, but I mean, he's a solid off lane. He gets work done, and with isolation, you saw what isolation can do from us. Definitely. Now, Tur the choice to ban Taronda over Malfurion. I think that Woe knows Malfurion was way more impactful than his. Just was able to control the field with the roots and shut down engages with the silent. Yeah, and there's a Sukov man on the other side. I bet Woe knows just going right for the Malfurion here. I wouldn't doubt it. He plays him so very well, and he pairs well with Diablo as well because you still have a root. To follow up the flip, so losing and, to Tirana isn't that big a hit to them. And it's really good on this map because he can get the moon fires off on the enemy team during the the team fights that are forced with the objective, and he needs to get the moon fires off to get his heal. Yeah, we've got Anna coming out along with Tychus. Oh, that's right. Soak every lane had been banning Anna every time, and they actually let it rock, and I guess they get her now. Get him on the tiger. That is something side. I had completely had completely missed on. Definitely so. They've been Ziltoid's Zeratul is still on the board as well. Yeah, I I'm guessing that Malfurion Zeratul. I think that's Hanzo I mean, Malfurion. We are well. We got one of those. Uh, Hanzo is really strong on this map. Um, he can clear the shrines pretty well. And I mean, he's basically a mage with how he deals damage. So what's B man got here? Gazlo. This is a great map for Gazlo. Gazlo oh, is set up. Lord in heaven. So here we uh, go. Any flips happening here? No, I don't see any. Teams are set up, ready to roll. We're gonna be rolling right into this one. Game number three. Chat, get hype. It is time to get excited. We have a game number three to wrap up the night here at NGS Division B West between Logical Decision and Soak Every Lane. I'm of two minds about this. Let me hear it. I prefer Soak Every Lane's draft. <laughs> I like Johanna and Kalthos and Gaslow. They go really well together. Anna boosting Kalthos, you know, oh my god. Anna <laughs> boosting Gaslow, oh my god. Oh yeah. However, Wono's on Malfurion, and that Dahaka did work last game with that isolation. So, yeah. It, it, here's, here's how I'm going to play it. 60-40, 60% win chance for uh, Soak Every Lane, 40% for Logical Decision. Boom, math can't I've, I've got to lean towards Soak Every Lane as well here as we get started. 
No, no, no. I, I'm favoring. Yeah, oh, your favorite is okay, really. I'm sure. That's right. Yeah. 60 40. We've got Ulysses on the Haka Ziltoid on the Hanzo, Ide on Diablo, Snuggler on Raynor, and Wono on the Malfurion. And for Soak Every Lane, we have Philip K on Johanna, Strogs on Kalfos, B Mid on Gazlo, Key on Anna, and DM and 13 on. Grenade build from Anna, hold your ground from Johanna, uh, Mana Addict. Yeah, these are pretty standard picks. Press the advantage. You usually see Orb Quest for Bygus at one. Definitely. And again with the Soul Shield. So gonna have to try to soak that Kael'thas damage again from the side of Ide, but here we go. Gaslo and Dahaka immediately going to that top lane. Not even gonna bother with the middle fight. Look at Gaslo sitting there with a turret in one vent, and Ulysses is hiding in the other vent. <laughs> yeah, they're just... It's gonna be just a... Surprise! Except Dahaka's still... Yeah, but Gaslo definitely has the advantage early on against the Dahaka there. Not, Dahaka not being able to get, really get away from those turrets early on. Yeah, but all the Haga has to really do right now is so is freeze the lane. That's and that's what they're doing. They are freezing the lane right in front of those towers. Yeah, so doing a very good job. And now what they all they want to do is get a, one pull on that Gaslo, get them into the towers, and then dead Gaslo. Yeah, we've been doing being smart there, backing off again, going toe to toe at the moment, diving deep for that globe. As the other two teams are just opting for the four man rotation through mid and bottom. For once, I think top lane is the more interesting item at the moment. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. Uh, unless the Diablo can get a pick here. Philip taking some damage. Wono and Snowbear are taking the camp. And the team's yeah, they're both on the camp. Pretty standard stuff. Back to the exciting action up top. <laughs> oh! Oh! The laser stacked. goes out, but so does the stun. So Ulysses is doing a very good job dancing around those turrets, timing his attacks on Beeman when Beeman stops to to set up that laser, which is great wave clear for Gaslo and with Dahaka you can kinda of get away from it pretty quick for I mean Dahaka Dahaka can win this via attrition pretty easily yeah. with oh, yeah. trade. Beeman sitting at half mana, Ulysses sitting at full mana there. And both teams meeting up in the middle, the goats for the side of Logical decision have already gone down, but so heavy lanes are sitting here poking away at minions and Jimmy. Gaslo <laughs> has abandoned the top lane, going right for those that mercenary, the super strong. As as I like this play as long as they don't miss soak top, because the soak from the lane is going to be more important than. Yeah, and they have left the mercenary camp and gone to get the soak. That's the right call. Yeah, those, those those shaman camps hit pretty hard, pretty early on. Even going just to get that soak, dropping a turret, gonna drop the turret, the the mine, and both teams are rotating up towards the shrine here. What do we have on to start this off? We've got a frozen shrine. Interesting fact: the shrines have to rotate between three different types of Punisher before they go to uh, another type. Yeah, so, at the same time. Yeah, but of course, RK being the strongest of those three, just because of those lasers that just do so much. But Frozen, definitely a strong, strong early one to have. It gets some very good picks if you can time those, time everything with. Oh the, wow! I said Dahaka, Diablo barely gets away. Super low. B Less is, than a hundred health. B Med is completely out of mana though, but the turrets are dropped, and this is gonna be some quick wave, some quick minion clear on the side of Soak Every Lane. There's that kill toss value. Yep, and Johanna doing a good job screening out, blocking the Ziltoid shots from the Hanzo. Yeah, they, they, they sent the Haka to go soak. I think that's the right call. He can burrow up top if necessary. Diablo running back in now. 24, so only so many. Um, so can we lean, kind of taking these off as one and one instead of grouping them up for a flame strike. Yeah, the, the Johanna W plus the Kael'thas Q is for real. Definitely, they're sitting at 40. Here we go. First this Punisher is... goes to the side of Soak Every Lane. It is a Frozen Punisher. But with Jimmy and uh, Hanzo, they're going to clear that out pretty quick. And Definitely. I like that they have sent the Haka to go Soak and push the other two lanes. They kite this thing super far back. 
and it's gonna not get very much done. They are gonna get a tower and a wall on the side of Soak Every Lane. Hanzo did opt for the arrow quest, going with the Q build here. Yeah, yeah, he wants that extra, the extra PVE clear, and I think that's the right call. It's just, it's so much damage to both clearing waves and to the minions. Oh, the monsters, yeah, the monsters do count for that explosive, explosion there. And it's not as, you don't have to be as geometric as the scatter arrow. I cannot do scatter arrow to save my life. I have specifically changed my buttons on Hanzo so that it is a uh, press and then active. That is one of the few skills that I still run that way, and it is I still can't get it to hit half the time, right? Because you take one little step the wrong direction, and all your arrows go the completely other direction. <laughs> that is true. Uh, B Med is working on this top camp. They'll be able to clear that out pretty quickly. Both teams rotating about, getting their soak. Dahaka's had some free soak in the bottom lane, and showing us they're nearing level nine on the side of logical decision. <laughs> Uh, but so can be like not too far behind, but a big rotation came up in the top lane. Key is super low. Hanzo trying to poke beyond the wall there. Key's very low, just opting to not turn off the trait and just walk away. <laughs> shuffle away, Grand Ball, shuffle away. We got Strogues versus Iltoid in the middle. Philip K rotating up as well. Now, Both teams now have even Haka, XP. The Haka got rotated on and had to burn his trait in order to get out alive, so he won't have that for the next objective, I don't think. He did offer Hero Stalker here, which is my preferred one, because once you burrow in, you pretty much have non-stop essence to use. Um, especially on maps like this, that have a very focused area to fight. Now, obviously, minion, the minion one has its place as well. Both of those options are very good for Dahaka, depending on how you're using him. Yeah, Dahaka has a, has a couple of options on how to build them, and I, I do agree with what uh, Ulysses has got. He's got Feeding Frizzy, one of the best songs. The Hakka's Bruiser build is very fun. <laughs> you get the tongue reduction, you get the essence damage, and you can do, you can do some surprising chaos on the Hakka. We have level 10s out for both teams. They're pretty much dead, even in XP at the moment. The bars are moving almost literally at the same time here. We got Tranquility. Tranquility? Tranquility? Yes. Okay. You, you, saw, you heard me have to like stop there for a second to make sure I read that right. Tranquility, Hyperion, Isolation, Lightning Breath, Dragon's get, Arrow. Uh, okay, thought process here is that both teams are very poke oriented. Yes. As opposed to dive and engage. So I'm thinking Wono it wants the, the ability to fall back and pop off his team as opposed... Like he's not going to get super deep on say Kael'thas to stop them from blowing up, and Tychus is going to hang back as well, yeah, with, only, especially with Odin. The only real dive they have is the Haka Diablo. And same thing on the other side, they've got Johanna for the front lane, but it's Tychus and Kel'Thas and Anna and Gazlo in the back, so... Well, the Gravo Bomb, that's their dive. Yeah. On the other side, we have Blessed Shield, Phoenix Gravo Bomb, Nano Boost, and Commander Odin. I had to go Nano Boost because Can't use the other pal is bad. Still broken. Ulysses is dropping very quick on the hog. In fact, he gets grav lifted and down he goes, not able to hit his trade or anything. Now, here comes the gravel bomb, down goes Malfurion in the middle of the tranquility. And Sokari Lane is just absolutely dominating this team fight here. Here comes Diablo, super low as well. Diablo popped by the laser, two kills for the Gazlo. Gazlo sniper. The downside to Malfurion, if the other team's got a lot of burst, he's not keeping up with it. I mean, Malfurion has a surprisingly high amount of uh, healing output if you can land those Moonfires, but it, it doesn't mean a lot if your team is just deleted. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got some of the long... He, he and Anna, I think, have the longest overtime sustained. Maybe Alex is up there with him as well, depending on the map and the build. Uh, both of them, both teams definitely have the long-term fighting, but Sokovy Lane has the burst potential here right now. Jimmy and Hanzo together don't really have much burst on their side. No, they don't have that, the explosiveness that... They, I mean, I, I say that, but also Hanzo has done the most damage out of anybody. <laughs> Hanzo's still sitting at two stacks on target practice, so... 
And Kale well, no, he, 27 he, on Mana Addict. He, that's a weird UI thing. He has hit, hit every hero at least twice. Yeah. At least once. Although it's why I because he's got two stacks. Uh, they need a better way to track yeah, that. Yeah, it, it, it's it it is not a good thing. Like you, you, you can't really see from there what he has to hit. He could have to hit everybody once, or he could have to hit one person one more time. Yeah. I guess I could click on him and see. I don't know if it'll tell me. He has hit four to five heroes once. He's hit two heroes three times. That's all I get out of it. <laughs> Thanks, Gabe. Dude, Gazzle up top taking the Bruiser Camp again. We got everybody pushing in the bottom lane here. We're gonna have a top shrine. The final shrine is gonna be the Arcane Shrine on the rotation here. Yeah, the Arcane in the top lane. That will that will probably get a keep if Soka relays. Plays our cards right. Here we go. Uh Logic Decision opting for the bottom camp here. Now, it's got it out. I'll, I'll soak it every lane. Here. Let's see if Dog digs in. No, Dog is going to clear mid. Gasol's going to rotate down here as well. Philip K going to take this for free. Uh, curious decision there. Yeah, very curious. B Man waiting in the shadows here. Doing a good job. Not even dropping turrets. Staying completely hidden here. Not giving any hit sign of his position away. And E Day is getting absolutely destroyed right now as Tychus unloads. Now, Fury gets gravel bombed. Here comes the Phoenix. Snow Glare is being forced out. Wono's going to have to pop tranquility and turn around with the Hyperion as they push in with these, these siege, siege goats. And they're just going to walk right past the keep here and let the minions soak everything up. V Men's soaking it up at the moment. Now the turrets are, it looks like. Minions are here. They're going to get a free flight wow. in the bottom lane. Yeah, Diablo hat was only at about 40 souls there, did not have the life for that engage. And, uh, okay, I can't, it, based on the Hanzo, I can't tell how many things, it says three. He's up to three, so he's hit, he's, he's hit everybody once and he's hit three, three times. <laughs> it doesn't give you any more information than that, even when you click on him individually. Great UI choices there. Yeah. So already soak every lane right on top of this shrine. They're already at eight. They're gonna take this pretty quick here. As logical decision is gonna have to do something here to try to turn this back around because they're gonna be down sixteen to fifteen going into this next Punisher, and it's an arcade Punisher as we've already said is gonna be really devastating. This is should be keep if this is played right and could be even more. Yeah, Rainer needs to get his uh, Hyperion back up before they can really engage on that Arcane Punisher too. They did get the. They really want sixteen. They did get the Bruisers out in the top, the Shaman Camp out in the top lane, but it's it's not going to live long enough to matter here. And Kalefoss would ignite here, so he's going to be able to throw out some pretty chunky cues and <laughs> just lock down the other team with with bombs everywhere. Here we go, engage at the keep walls. Here we go, the Punisher leaps over. Tychus has already popped Odin. There goes the Phoenix, just dropping everything to keep the team out away as they can push in. John Cena wailing away at this keep. He's already down to half health. Here comes Hyperion. Philip K dishing out what he can against that fort with that mace of his. John Cena leaping yeah. again, and they're following up on it this time. There's a gravel bomb to hug. Diablo is lifted up. Popsy Unstoppable gets exploded. There so that was a nice keep. combo there. The Johanna stun into the Gravo combo prevented uh, Diablo from using his ult to stop the Gravo combo. Yeah, getting getting the lockdown long enough that Diablo was unable to time his lightning press. And you knew that was most likely what he was saving for was that Gravo bomb. But they, they hold out. They only lose the keep. No core damage done, but 17 to 16. Two buildings left on the side of Logical Decision. They have everything up on the side of Soak Every Lane. It's a very red map right now, but that that went about as well as you could have hoped for Logical Decision. They only lost one person. Diablo is still working on his souls. Yeah. So he didn't lose all of them from that engage, and he can max it out. Uh, sitting at 57. But look at Kel'Thas sitting at 48 globes on Mana and Addict. 
That is a ton of a shield. That is a big shield there on the side of Kel'thas. Yeah, infinite mana at this point, and a basically, uh, uh, what, how much mana does he have? 13,000. So, yeah, that that's a pretty huge shield. That's a 1,400 health shield that he gets on that spot. So it puts him on par HP-wise with some of the beefier heroes there. It gives him more HP than Johama. Oh my gosh. Effective HP. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. It's 1,000 HP less than Johama. Very That's still a lot for a mage. David with a good scouting turret up there in the in the smog so Dahaka can't sneak on in. And they're gonna try to take the second keep here with another shrine coming up soon. We got Mortar Shrine for starting the rotation off again. Uh, we've got goats pushing down the middle lane. The unstoppable pop takes that turret out very quickly. <laughs> really hated that turret. <laughs> that turret said some very bad things and just had to be punished. Your world is upside down. Diablo having flashbacks into Diablo two days with the assassin turret uh, trap builds. Looks like Silicon Relane is going to get this top camp probably for free. Yeah, and Gazzo at this point can just pretty much shred it. Even without the uh, Robo Goblin. Looks like Luxury Decision sticks it out. They need to pick a fight here soon before 20 is online. They are down almost two whole levels at this point. But they, they don't have the Haka. They don't, and down goes Hanzo immediately. EJ's going to go next. He's locked down completely. Good I don't know placement. why they were picking a fight without having all five there. I don't know why you pick a fight in that tiny little quarter against the Gazzo and Kael'thas either. And Johan. No. That was a bad, bad engage there from Logical Decision. Unfortunate to see. Yeah, they could have sniffed out the camp attempt and then engaged onto the back line and gotten Kael'thas. If, if they get out Kael'thas, then that gets rid of a lot of the problems. So Kirby Lane's got a pretty free start to the shrine here. In fact, they might be able to clear it out before Luxor's Decision even shows up. And they're going to have another powerful Punisher here with 20s pushing down the middle lane here very quickly. Yeah, with the, with the changes, the Mortar Punisher is almost as strong as the Arcane. Yeah, we've got Rebirth. We've got Miniature Black Hole. We've got Nano Infusion, Big Red Button, and Blinded by the Light again on Johanna for Soak Every Lane. Yeah, Miniature Black Hole. <laughs> if you thought Grandpa Bomb was hard to deal with before, good lord. <laughs> Have fun dealing with And if Strokes misses the misses a Phoenix for some reason, he can just push it over a little bit farther. Rebirth, of course, has oh, to... Yeah, yeah he can I, Rebirth. Rebirth is... Rebirth is a choice. Here yeah. we go. Down goes the key. And this is more than likely GG at this point, as they've got a Gazzo, they've got a Tychus. There goes the Unstoppable, there goes the Gravel Bomb, here comes the combo. Wodo just getting absolutely blasted, he'll be able to escape. Wow, that. all that Tank stun. Run. So much stun, the core shields are down, here it goes. Punisher is unwailing away, 60, 50, 45, I can't even count fast enough, 33, 25, 18, 10, 15, it's 12, done. it's done. This is GG, game number two, three going over two. Soak every lane. Ladies and gentlemen, game map three. Pick value. Map pick is the way to win in Division B, it seems. Yep. So here we go. Final stats here. Post game. 7 nothing. The kills. That's all the kills that there were in that game. It seemed like a lot more was happening. Yeah, they were, they were picking on that Diablo a whole bunch. Yeah, Diablo with four deaths on the side of Logical Decision. That that final engage really out, over by that Shaman came really hurt Logical Decision there. Oh my god, look at the stat line with Kael'thas and Gaslow. 21,569, 21,600. Nice. <laughs> Very nicely done. I'm going to go see if we can get a member of Soak Every Lane into our chat here. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back. One digit difference.
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We've got myself, we've got Monkus, and we've got Philip K., the captain of hey. Soak Every Lane, and you guys did that tonight. How you feeling? Oh, yeah. I feel, we're feeling really good. We, like, we warmed up. Um, funny, in the warm-up, like, our first warm-up game was against, like, one of the Div S teams, because I just offered, like, hey, we want to practice uh, a map, and they said yes, and, like, I didn't check who they were. <laughs> <laughs> We had, some good, we had some good fights, but it went as bad as well as you thought it would. Yeah, I would, I would expect that. Uh, let's start out but, with map number one, though, y'all's choice. So before we get started, the map choice won every game tonight. Interesting. Just so you know. Uh, so map number one, Volskaya Foundry. I think the first question I, me and Muckus have is Pyroblast? <laughs> I have no idea. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask for that. He just picked it. Um, he even went the pyroblast upgrade. Yeah, we saw that. Still not. Yeah. Still not sure about that. But yeah. So. Uh, yeah, Kalepos always managed to pick at least one talent that I was like, okay. <laughs> so they uh, they drafted the Diablo Zeratul Jaina right out the gate, and uh, oh yeah, did that show y'all any any concern going into that? No. Uh, we sort of got what we wanted with Rainer, KT, Joanna, and they got what they wanted, and we just played better. Definitely. They were definitely, uh, unfortunately, a little off on there. It was void for some timings that game. And you yeah. executed that. you have got that Gazlo Kael'thas combo down pretty, pretty scarily. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Which, which was more impactful, do you think? Gazlo or Kael'thas? Well, as our Gazlo would like to say, he beat Kael'thas on damage every game. <laughs> Oh yeah, funny. The funny part. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that in game three. I've got. Oh, yeah. I've still got it pulled up. Don't worry. Uh, All right. But uh, yeah, y'all executed really well on game number one. The combos were on point. You had the lane pressures. Uh, didn't quite get that well on the top lane to start. And yeah. That, that bottom, that third Punisher felt a little bit wasted, honestly. Uh, what was protector or Punisher? I'm sorry, the protector. Game one. All right. That third. Uh, the one, one where we just were going for core, right? Uh, third one was bottom lane. You guys managed to get yeah. to the wall, and that was about it. No, uh, we used it to get the wall, but we were just sort of like... I think they just poked it out, and we were scared of the Void Prism, so we didn't really want to push in. Okay. Yeah, we were just kind of curious. What y'all but I do about. remember with that one is, like, we just suicided on the keep, and then we dropped turrets and just finished. So... <laughs> well, that worked, but... They... I consider it a good, decent. Yes, Definitely. Uh, thanks for the raid, D1DZ Games. Uh, as we're wrapping up here, those of you just joining us, we had Logical Decision from Division B West versus Soak Every Lane. We're talking to Soak Every Lane Captain right now. Uh, Philip yep. K. As we wrap this Ooh. up. Soak Every Lane did take this one 2-1, to one, but let's move on to game number 2 real quick. We won't keep you here too long. Uh, picked right. by Logical Decision. Mm -hmm. Tomb of the Spider Queen. They did win that map, as we said. Uh, the team that picked the map each game was the team that walked away with the victory. Uh, yep. they, they, both teams looked pretty solid there. Just uh, couldn't. They kind of got an early lead on you guys and weren't quite able to climb back out of that one. Yeah, we didn't really have the wave clear to follow them in rotations once we got behind. Yeah. Uh, so once they really started rotating, we just sort of had to fall behind, and then we couldn't really get any picks. The Joanna, they were good at not being in position to get picked, and it was hard to play Imperius in the Joanna. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. what I'll say. We had a quick question about that. The Imperius plus Leoric, kind of going for the double bruiser option. Yep. Uh, we've been in running Imperius as a main tank, and it's been working out pretty well. Okay. Uh, the yeah. Leor Leoric was more of a deny pick. We were sort of scared of them playing Leoric, Understood. as uh, you might have noticed. Yeah. Uh, um, I have a question yeah. about... Um, might have came in to play in the second game and was banned in the third game. Was that a, a something that they all practice and prepared for? Wanted to get into my We've been playing my a lot lately, <laughs> and I think teams are rightly scared. Maybe it wasn't the best showing in the second game, but uh, there are some vods out there of what we can do with it. Uh, they were scared enough of the Maya that they banned her in the third game. So definitely, they oh, definitely yeah. felt the impact. <laughs> well, I'm sure you don't want to talk too much about game number two. That was a lost one. Was a lost one. Let's move on to game number three. Infernal Shrine, Jal's pick. 
Let's talk about Gazlo, Gazlo Kael'thas again, just running rampant. Oh, yeah. Did you see the damage stat line between those two here? Oh, yeah. It was like, what, 100, 100 in favor of Gavlo? It was less than 100 in, in favor of Gazlo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, less than 100. That but, was uh, great. That one, that match probably the least bloody of all of them, only ending 7-0 to zero in kills, even mm -hmm. though so much was happening. Do uh, yeah. you guys feel pretty good on that map? Oh, we felt great. Awesome. Um, had to say words to get the Tychus in, but I think the Tychus worked out really well. And we didn't really have the chase to kill them after we killed Diablo, but they couldn't kill us either. Yeah. Yeah, Tychus wore them down, and Kael'thas and Gaslow finished them off. Mm-hmm. Played out exactly how we wanted it to. Very so. well played. And... It didn't even die once. You team zero deaths the entire game. Oh, yeah. Oh. Anna, Anna finally getting to play in that third game as well, and Anna with Kael'thas and Gazlo is just a nightmare. Oh, it's scary. I think I even saw Gazlo get nailed once or twice. Yeah. I, I call it the Lucio effect. Probably should call it the Gazlo effect. <laughs> Pops, but... <laughs> gotta, gotta make sure Gazlo beats Kael'thas and damage. So definitely... Just showing teams why we ban Anna. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So very strong showing game number three. Uh, Malikas, you got anything to add? Uh, no. Do you have anybody we want to give a shout out to? All right. Well, I got to give it a shout out. Shout out to Bmed, the Gazlo player, because he played really well that game, and it was just great. Definitely. And then I got to give a shout out to my team because we didn't lose game number one finally. <laughs> First time we didn't lose game number one. Good job. Well done. Yeah. And then I think that's pretty much it. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Philip. Go enjoy the All victory. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for tonight. We had lots of decision for.